I'm Jeff Wilson. I'm the president and CEO of Precipitate Gold Corporation. Precipitate trades on the TSX Venture on the symbol PRG and on the OTCQB at the symbol PREIF. Precipitate Gold is a junior mining and exploration company focused primarily in the Dominican Republic, but also with assets in Newfoundland. And the company is focused on new discoveries uh, and finding what could be world-class discoveries for major mining companies. Jeff, good to see you. Haven't seen you since uh, oof, September 2020. We spoke a couple times uh, then. Good year, 2020, wasn't it? Enjoyed it. It was a good year, yeah. yeah. Yes, it, it, it started out a little bit shaky with the COVID stuff, but it sure ramped up at the back end and was a lot of fun. Okay, so what's happened since? Because uh, you were 30 cents then, 10 cents now. You've come, a share price obviously come off during that time. Um, market cap still around 10 million bucks. So what's been happening? Yeah, so we've we've stayed positioned with our assets in the Dominican Republic. We, we really believe that uh, we've got key assets there. Uh, they're owned 100%. No underlying uh, payments, no underlying work commitments uh, in very strategic locations uh, in the country, uh, as been evidenced by some news that's come out recently. Um, and uh, in the midst of sort of some political uncertainty and some bureaucracy in the Dominican Republic that sort of create a little bit of uncertainty in terms of, uh, you know, certain other companies and some of our neighbors' ability to get things done, we thought it would make sense to diversify a little bit. And uh, in mid to late 2021, we picked up a couple of assets in Newfoundland. Uh, two assets there. One that's seen some prior work and, you know, has some interesting prior uh, drill intercepts and showings. And another one that's a little bit more grassroots, but in uh, what we believe to be quite uh, prospective geology. So it's kind of given us a balanced portfolio here and we're positioned to sort of push on. Right. So let's talk about the Dominican Republic, all right? Because obviously some good news, bad news, Sam, I, I think uh, it feels like. So um, let's talk about the good news. We'll start with the positives, right? So um, Barrick, you've, you've done a deal, you got some money and tell us all about that, first of all. Yeah. So we picked up ground surrounding one of the largest gold mines in the world. That's Barrick's Pueblo Viejo in the Dominican Republic. Uh, we saw an opportunity there to essentially surround Barrick's mining operation on three sides. Uh, we picked up that ground uh, for what at the time was $25,000 cash Canadian and uh, some shares of precipitate that were escrowed. Uh, but a year after that, and after sending about $350,000 doing our own exploration and trying to get some targets there to a drill stage, uh, we entered into discussions with Barrick on an earning agreement, essentially a joint venture where Barrick agreed to spend uh, up to $10 million US over six years and provide or produce a pre-feasibility study in exchange for 70% of the asset. So that has progressed along nicely. Barrick spent about two and a half million dollars to date. Uh, but uh, in recent uh, months, Barrick came to us and indicated that uh, aside from the expiration potential, they saw some value in some of the ground that we held. Uh, and uh, we started talking about a possible transaction there to amend our earn in to extract a couple of small portions of our project that they're earning on in exchange for cash. So what that got us was $5 million US, which the US dollar has been performing quite nicely recently. So that equates to about 6.4 million Canadian uh, in non-dilutive cash in our treasury and a 3% NSR on the ground that they've extracted as a bit of a defense uh, mechanism for us as well. And, and as an added couple of bonuses there, um, they're going to do condemnation drilling on those for the postage stamps that they're acquiring. If the condemnation drilling intersects any meaningful mineralization that Barrick deems extractable, they will put that ground back into the urn in um, and we get to keep our $5 million, which is uh, quite a nice uh, benefit for us. And uh, if they ever in, in the next 10 years wish to relinquish any of these ground, uh, these pieces of ground, they get a right to uh, back. So it's, it's an opportunity for us to divest of a couple of small pieces of ground that have some extensive prior drilling. I mean, there's been over 119 holes in these areas. We know that there's much in, not much in the way of meaningful mineralization. And it's our belief that Barrick will utilize this stuff for infrastructure rather than any kind of extraction. Well, there's the key bit, right? There, there, there's the key bit to this because I'm so fascinated by the kind of the strategies that juniors uh, employ. You know, you said we're going to wrap ourselves around, um, you know, their their pit, um, Pueblo Vejo. Um, it, not necessarily because you thought you'd find a lot going on there, or did you actually think there's a chance of you know finding mineralization of a decent enough quality to run your own operation? Was this always about how do we tap into? Barrack some which way, whether whether it be for exploration potential or for utilization of the land, which is obviously where they've ended up. Yeah, I mean, I wish I was smart enough to to have seen all of this coming, you know, two and a half years ago when we acquired the ground. I mean, I think that as a junior exploration company, 
and a junior exploration CEO, you, you always have sort of rose colored glasses a little bit and you believe that there's perspective ground uh, that can be acquired. And, and there certainly are still pieces of ground here on this project. I don't, I don't want to undermine the fact that some of this has been extracted. Uh, the majority of the Pueblo Grande project, our project, remains part of the earn-in with Barrick. There are a number of targets that they will continue to test in the months and hopefully years ahead. Um, but as it turned out, there were some circumstances, again, that you know we, we really couldn't have foreseen uh, that worked in our favor in the last couple of years. And you know, I guess maybe you've got to be smart to be lucky, as they say. And we had some pieces of ground that, that, that were uh, uh, of use and of value to Barrick and were able to structure a transaction that I think is very beneficial for shareholders. Okay, so infrastructure, tailings, wh wh whatever it is that they're going to utilize this land for, uh, five million bucks, US rounding error for those guys. But for you, what are you going to go do with the money? Because this is, this is meaningful to, um, to you. I'm not quite sure what your, your current cash position was before this deal and, and, and when you actually received this cash. Yeah, so we received the cash from Barrick uh, on the day the transaction closed. It was another very interesting part of the transaction. Really, Barrick took on all of the risk. So essentially, uh, we were going to relinquish these pieces of ground for them to pick up and instantaneously a wire transfer that that money hit our bank account on the day we news released it. So, so the money's there. Uh, what are we going to do with the money? We had so, so what's million that in total? What's that in total? You two million. Okay, sorry, you're going to get that. Yeah. Two million plus five. So that's yeah. So that's a six million. Well, two, five million is in U.S. is about six and a half Canadian, and we have two preceding that. So we're about eight and a half million dollars Canadian in the treasury. Yeah. Uh, some of which is flow through money, which will be earmarked for, for Newfoundland, which we'll, I assume we'll talk about in a little bit. Um, the balance of that really, you know, sort of the world's our oyster a little bit here. I mean, on the one hand, our, our remaining projects in the Dominican Republic, first of all, Barrick will continue on Pueblo Grande. So they'll, they'll continue to spend there. Our other two assets, Ponton and Wanda Herrera, are both drill ready. We have a number of targets on both of those projects. We have drill permits on both of those projects. And so we're, you know, uh, poised and positioned to uh, deploy money in the Dominican Republic on our two assets there. Subject, as you know, the, yeah, yeah. I was about yeah, to say, so, you know, so, so, been, subject to watch after because obviously that's been the kind of the, the, the problem. Dominican Republic in terms of perception of the market, and Dominican Republic in terms of ability to do anything on the ground, get permits, licenses, etc. That is it's difficult at the moment. So, what's yeah, the what's the chance of those projects actually moving forward, or are you? 100% now focus on Newfoundland. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't say we're 100% focused. I think Newfoundland has a chance to be sort of uh, an, a, a, sort of an early mover here in terms of our uh, our news flow and uh, and results and exploration. But the Dominican Republic, you know, look, I think that this this one what one has to keep in mind is that Barracks Pueblo Viejo, where we just did this transaction, Carol, that is the single largest contributor to the Dominican Republic's economy. So it's not as if mining is this out of favor, you know, disliked. Um, business. This is this is the the most important business in the Dominican Republic, and they recognize that. But like any part of the world, whether you want to, you know, drill or exploit in the Dominican Republic, or you want to build a pipeline in Canada, you know, these major projects run into opposition, and you have to work through these uh, issues. And so that's what's happening in the DR. I don't believe that it's a government that doesn't want mining. It's a government that wants to make sure that the people of its country understand the benefits of mining and that mining can be done uh, in a responsible manner. So uh, I think what we're waiting on here a little bit is uh, our, our other project, our Wanda Herrera project, is adjacent to an existing three and a half million ounce gold equivalent deposit owned and operated by Gold Quest. That project of Gold Quest has been in limbo for some time, awaiting an exploitation permit to go through the development process, to take it from exploration to exploitation. And that's been stalled. And it's been stalled not so much by the government, but by local business leaders and, you know, the church to some extent and, and others. Now that's evolved really quite well in recent months. Um, and I think that they've they've put a, a lot of those opponents kind of uh, at ease with, with the, the realization that, look, we're going to do all the necessary environmental impact studies, et cetera. But to answer your question in terms of what will we do with the money and, and the DR, I think that will be a catalyst for us. I think that Romero receiving that permit would, would signify to it, at the very least to the investment community that if you find it, you can explore, you can exploit it, and you can extract it. And uh, for us to spend money exploring when the guys next door can't get it out of the ground, 
you're not going to get credit for that that exploration success. What we need is a pathway to to uh, to production, and that gives us the green light to go after finding more. So that's kind of our mentality on that. We're sitting tight. We're hoping that that permit for Gold Quest comes soonish. But in the meantime, you know, we've got other uh, other places to uh, to continue to work and, and move the needle forward. Okay, so it's kind of an interesting topic at the moment. So it's sort of you know, dwell dwell on this one a bit, but the social license component. Obviously, Gold Coast has been sitting waiting for what? How long? Years, right? It's been over over five years. Yeah. Over five years, right? It's taken a long time for them to get get there. Um, and I think this is a dawning realization from miners that you need to pay attention to the to the little guys. Um, and, and sort of local and the social license thing is real. We've been hearing about it for over the past few. Uh, months, but there's there's still people who don't necessarily believe that. What, what you you're not at, you're, you're not necessarily at that point yourself. But at some point, you're going to have to kind of step up and say, okay, with a one eye on this project, we're focusing. Uh, we're going to look at Newfoundland, but we're probably having kind of similar issues up there. So maybe, uh, but with our one eye down here in Dominican Republic, I mean, are you geared up? Do you have the skill sets on on board to have those conversations? What what what's to say that you won't encounter the same problems? Yeah, no, definitely that is that is a potential problem. I think that so you know, regardless of the amount of work that we're doing in terms of exploration or news flow or these kinds of things, <clears throat> I think one of the things that people may or may not recognize is that <clears throat> even during slow news times and exploration times, I'm spending a significant <clears throat> amount of time talking to my contacts in the Dominican Republic, people in government. Uh, people in the business community, uh, local politicians, <clears throat> to try to indicate, you know, what is it that we need to do to position ourselves to be uh, welcomed versus, you know, uh, not welcome. And and so it's an ongoing process of trying to position ourselves to be the the, the company that uh, locals will want to do business with and and to see to see the benefit of us being there. Um, you know, although you have some opposition that has a loud voice. That might be a, you know, a local business leader or a local mayor or someone like that. I mean, for the most part, the local communities uh, are looking at you know, jobs. They're looking at the economic benefit for the individual and for the individual's family. That's what really matters to most people. And I think that's where we have an opportunity to educate <clears throat> during our time down there in the times when we're not working. And quite frankly, I think it's important to not be rushing to be working because I think People in any culture recognize when you're just talking to them because you've got an agenda to sort of get over. And hey, we're going to be nice to you today because we want to go drilling tomorrow. I think what you need to do is you need to communicate these with these people, even when you know you've sort of put put your uh, put your equipment away and and you're just sitting down to try to really understand their needs. And that's kind of the way that we've been positioning this. So, you know, having assets in another jurisdiction such as Newfoundland allows us to make sure that our shareholders aren't completely on hold with no potential upside while we work through these, you know, local issues in the Dominican Republic. But um, we need to also evidence to the locals in the DR that, you know, we're, we're genuine and that our interests are aligned with everybody in these communities. Right. Okay. So you're going to go through that the right way, but for your share, current shareholders, um, you're, you're, you're saying loudly, say, right, Dominican Republic, not, well, it's not on hold. It's going to, it's going to move slowly, but it's going to move the right way. We're going to have the right discussions and we may be able to release some value at some point down the future. So today, where you should be valuing us at 10 million bucks by the looks of it, uh, is Newfoundland and what we've got there, plus obviously cash, cash in the bank, uh, at eight and a half million on a market cap of 10 million, uh, Yes. People, people, <laughs> yeah. people, people haven't quite got the story yet, Jeff. Yeah. So well, let's tell, yeah. let's let's talk let's talk about Newfoundland. Because so the reason I want to understand this is because look, mining's. I always say this, but mining's tough, right? The, every day there's problems, and it's a case of risk mitigation every every goddamn day. That's that's your job, right? But me as a shareholder, I'm like, I don't care. Don't make your problems my problems. You, you, I want a growth story. I want you to create value for me, and I want you know I want the shares to go up uh, up in price. But you jumped up to Newfoundland. So you've got a delicate dance to do here because we saw this last year, lots of companies jumping on the bandwagon of newfound gold and marathon, et cetera. You've got to, uh, and, and some of those, and we interviewed some of those companies, someone will never ever do anything, but it was jumping on the bandwagon. You with your track record and, and you with obviously more recently with, with um, what's going on down in Dominican Republic, you've got to deliver something real here. 
There's got to be some real strong fundamentals um, here. So, so what have you got? What are you going to do? Yeah, and I think that's a, that's a very good point, and it's a point that I was, you know, somewhat reluctant, quite frankly, initially to go into Newfoundland because I didn't want to be perceived to have, you know, sort of chasing, the, you know, the new trend and the hot, you know, area play. And so, if if somebody takes, uh, and, and we will hear, if someone takes ten seconds to let me speak about Newfoundland, they'll they'll, they'll realize that we're not sort of trying to, you know, bolt ourselves onto this area play and, and yet be actually too far out of the right rocks to even really be, be relevant. What we did is, you know, my geologist has spent some time in, in, in Newfoundland in the past and previously in his career, likes the geology, had some experience in certain regions. The areas where we've acquired ground are nowhere near newfound gold. We're not in the same geological trend. We're not in the same belt. We're not trying to be something like proximity play. We're in quite distinct regions that have their own technical merit. Um, our mother load project has been drilled in the past. Part of the strategy there, a little bit like our, uh, well, maybe not quite like the barrack deal, but you know, the, the thinking that, look, you've got to buy it, you've got to pick up a large land package. It's got to be perspective based on geology, prior work, whatever it may be. So we negotiated with seven different property vendors to consolidate that project, one contiguous land package for the first time ever. So yeah, there was some stuff here and some snips there. But you know they're they're all their own little empire trying to make something out of these small little areas. We were able to consolidate all of that, wrap it all up, look at it with you know big airborne survey uh, early on. Uh, we've had boots on the ground uh, coming up here in the next couple of weeks, and we'll be announcing that. And we'll really start to sort of you know figure some things out here and try to get this to a drill stage uh, in the near term. Um, and you know, and in, in our second project called ACE, again. A different, a much more early stage, you know, very little prior work, just, just in the, it is in the right rocks. It's had a couple of very sort of splashy grab samples historically, and we were able to pick it up uh, for, you know, I don't want to say a song, but, you know, reasonable terms, um, you know, sort of stock heavy versus cash. And, you know, we'll figure out here, I think in the next 12 months, whether that's, you know, got, got the right stuff to, to justify a drill program or we give it back to the vendors. So, you know, our objective here, very much as you indicated, look, I, I can sit down and I can tell people that the stuff in the Dominican Republic is going to work out. Just be patient. Nobody buys a junior exploration stock to be patient. They, they buy it to, to have a return on investment in the near term. And you've got to be doing something that's going to move the needle. And Newfoundland gives us that, you know, sort of uh, near term uh, catalyst potential. But I think the stuff in the DR gives us, you know, projects that are in very prospective regions that, uh, you know, the Barrick deal proved that. Um, and I think that when the timing's right, we'll deploy some capital back into the Dominican Republic where, when we feel like there's a reasonable expectation for a return on investment. Right. I, I, you know, I'm sorry, I, I got to say, this. I, I don't think anyone's going to give you any value for anything that's going on down in the Dominican Republic. You've got the, you've got the cash on that you received from Barrick. Now they want to see what you're going to do with that. So I'm, 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 I'm all ears about Newfoundland. If you can, at some later date, prove the market me wrong about what you, what, you know, being able to monetize um, further to Dominican Republic, that's great. That's all gravy. That's all upside. So right now, the story I want to hear is um, about, um, obviously, ACE is a little bit, you know, a little bit uh, f f further behind here. But, and and could, could you argue that's a neurology play? Because you, you do have newfound gold somewhere uh, yeah, close by, don't it's, you? It's, it yeah, and it's, and it's less about newfound gold, actually, because, again, it's not the same rock type and not the same geology, but it's it's a postology play to uh, what used to be Ethos is now Prospector. Yeah. We changed their name um, and with their Too Good project, which has got some very high-grade material there. And Exploits Discoveries um, are also proximal. To okay. It. So there's a couple of you know, high-grade projects. Those yeah, are the comps. Those are the comps. Awesome. Right. And um, just in terms, and then obviously, um, then with um, the kind of the the, the ro rolling up um, of the of the, of these land packages that you that you've done down at Motherload, um, that's great. Um, can you kind of um, tell us how you're going to allocate capital to each of those? Projects in the near term, because I think you've got to some, you've got to you've got to make some quick wins in terms of headlines to the market for these impatient retail um, investors uh, and existing and, and potential. Um, and so, what, what does that look like for the rest of this year? And you know, what's what's the clever, meaningful stuff that people should really be paying attention to um, in terms of the the way that you you go about trying to 
um, work out what it is that you've got. Sp sp let's start with yep. the load. Yeah, and and I, I'd I'd like to finish with the fact that um, you know the the Newfoundland stuff has a treasury uh, that that I'll speak about what we're going to do with it here in the short term that we had prior to the Barrick transaction. Mm -hmm. With the Barrick transaction completed, an additional six and a half million dollars Canadian in the bank. There's a second leg to the what other than the DR might we do, and it's acquisition, it's m &A. It's now we're a cashed up uh, company that uh, could potentially look at what kind of other accretive assets we might be able to bring into the company or give our shareholders exposure to, uh, thanks to the cash in a in an otherwise fairly uh, soft market. So, so that's another thing okay. we're looking at. So but jurisdiction, jurisdiction agnostic by the sounds of it. Um, yes. And ideally picking something which is cash constrained and has real value as opposed to having to try and uh, uh, unpick from a blank sheet of paper, right? So does yeah, that tell yeah. us what I mean, you're looking had, for? Yeah, well, I've had actually a number already. I mean, our news release on the Bear transaction is a week old and mm. I've already had a number of approaches from you know people I know, people I don't know, sort of asking, so what are you going to do with this money? Um, you know, I think you know, the, the, the potential to acquire something a little bit more advanced, the potential to acquire something perhaps with the historic or known resource, uh, an exploration potential um, is certainly out there. I think there are some great companies that have advanced great projects and because of the market environment we've been in the last month or two are just not getting that traction and, and could certainly benefit from an injection of capital like the kind of money we now have in the treasury, whether that's in a some sort of a you know uh, one plus one equals three on some sort of a merger merger type um, transaction or if that's just a, a project specific you know I'm I'm looking at those things. We could also pick up you know quite large land packages of earlier stage stuff and and have the financial wherewithal to uh, you know to test targets and try to try to discover something ourselves. So you're we're kind of in this position where you know you're when you've got money like this uh, on a non dilutive basis you're you're sort of the pretty girl at the dance and and I think there'll be a lot of people you know, um, speaking with us to find out what we may or may not be interested in. And for us, I think what we need to do, and I'll have some conversations with you more soon, is, is to try to vector our, you know, our focus in terms of what are we interested in? You know, what stage project would we like? Uh, perhaps, you know, sure, we're, we're, we're jurisdictionally agnostic, but, you know, where do we really want to be? And then start to focus in on what kinds of opportunities might make sense for us to spend a little bit of time looking at. I mean, I don't want to get distracted by that because we've got projects we want to advance. But I think it's a it's a unique situation we find ourselves in thanks to a transaction that, that kind of came out of nowhere. Well, and, the, um, but that's that's, yeah. the, that's the thing about being the pretty girl at the dance, right? It, you don't necessarily end up with the with with the right partner in, in the sense that you've got. A, a, a near term history with what's gone on down in the Dominican Republic, where you haven't had a chance to prove yourselves, right? And you've got picked up Newfoundland, and you've got, there's, a, there's a couple of tar targets um, there, obviously, in diff different stages where you haven't really done anything yet. Um, and if you go sort of around looking for the, for the, for the next the next gig before having done anything it is, is a, there's a point at which the market starts to judge that like, you know are these these guys you know are they deal makers or are they actually doers and you, so you've got to be really careful you, you're right you don't want to be distracted but you're also going to be really careful that um you you, you don't get discredited for not being actually able to do proper exploration or moving projects along and you know finishing completing um, what, what you start out to do. Do you know what I mean? So it's a, it's a real, de again, yep. delicate dance. I use that phrase again. Yeah, no, it, it is. And I think, you know, there's sort of two sides of the, of the equation here when you find yourself with a, with a sort of a war chest here of, of cash that, that didn't cost you any shares, so to speak. And, and one is, you know, what I'm, what I'm reluctant to do is to let this sort of just sort of, you know, dwindle away, you know, 8 million becomes 7 million becomes 6 million. And you're sort of, you know, going sideways and all you're doing is just paying overhead and, and you know, not really doing anything creative shareholder. Right. Versus, right. So, right. so tell me what you think a creative looks like, right? So you, you're saying potentially it might be go find another deal or it could be do something with mother load or ACE. Yep. I mean, what, 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 what does yeah. it look like to you? What's a creative mean to you? Well, I think, I, I think that it's, it's going to be both of those things because um, in December of last year, we raised uh, a little over $2 million. Mm -hmm. 1.6 million Canadian of that was flow through funds, which will absolutely be deployed in Canada and at the current time in Newfoundland this year. 
So there's no question that Newfoundland is going to see a fairly aggressive campaign of exploration. Go back to your point for us to actually do what we said and set out to do, which is to go and spend money and test targets and find out whether or not we're as smart as we think we are about, you know, the ground that we've picked up and the potential of that ground. So that money is earmarked for Canadian exploration and it will be spent in exploration this year. I think you'll see mother load very likely drilled unless something, you know, really goes, goes wrong there in terms of the, the work that we do leading into a drill program. ACE is a bit more of a wild card, but if it justifies it, we've got the, we've got the financial capacity to drill on both projects or to do a more significant size program on, you know, the one that we deem to be the most uh, deserving. So to answer your question, we will spend money in Newfoundland. We are going to test our thesis in terms of whether or not we can identify projects that deliver in terms of exploration and discovery. At the same time, we'll still have the remainder of our of our treasury to deploy as we see fit, whether that's sort of sitting and waiting for the DR or, you know, if the timing is right and the circumstances are right, spending in the DR, that could certainly be part of the uh, of, of the go forward plan. Or if something else emerges in the interim that we think, um, you know, can add value to shareholders, then, uh, you know, at, at, a, at a price that makes sense, um, then we would look at something like that again. I wouldn't want to acquire something where the acquisition was handing over a bunch of our money to a, to an outgoing owner. I would want it to be something whereby they get in the boat with us on a share and an equity position. And then we've got our money to be able to spend on assets rather than putting it in somebody else's pocket. So it's a delicate dance a little bit to sort of make these deals worthwhile for, for us. I would say right now we're in a buyer's market. So if we, if we, you know, see something we like, we would structure it in a way that made sense to us. Um, but you know, these are things that, you know, we're not in a rush to jump into anything else. We've got assets, we've got a portfolio we like. Um, so again, it has to be something that we think is, uh, you know, net beneficial to precipitate shareholders for us to, to go after and acquire. Okay. You, you're not going to be casual with your money. You're going to, you're going to be smart. Think about it. Okay. Um, is the same team together or any, any, uh, people coming in, going out? From last time we spoke? No, we've got the same team. I mean, the one uh, unfortunate sort of change is that uh, our good friend Quentin Henning had to step down from the board when he took on the Crestcat role. So uh, Quentin is still a very good friend of mine and, and an ally for us. And I speak to him quite frequently, but he, uh, he resigned from the board back last August. And um, we haven't added to that to this point. So the rest of the team is all still in place. Okay. Okay. Well, like Jeff, I guess this case of let, let let's we'll step back, see what you do. Uh, so, what are, reminding me again, what are the kind of near term uh, things that you're going to be delivering on, say, the next six months, end of the year? Yeah. So, most of the focus in the near term is definitely going to be Newfoundland. Uh, you're going to see here in the weeks ahead, we are going to initiate uh, boots on the ground. We're going to have you know crews out there um, doing you know prospecting, sampling, mapping, going to some of the the areas that we really liked on maps and spending some time there with boots on the ground. Uh, sort of ground truthing, if you will, some of these prospects that look to be the most interesting to us. Um, upon completion of that, it looks like we'll do ground geophysics. We'll do some IP over the, what looks to be the best areas and utilize that geophysical data, that IP information for, for drill targeting. We've got drill contractors sort of softly lined up already because that's a big deal in Newfoundland is getting people and getting personnel and getting contracts. We've sort of got that stuff arranged. Um, so my hope is a, a sequence of news releases over the course of the coming month that all leads into, you know, drilling. Um, and in the interim, Barrick will continue to work on the balance of the Pueblo Grande project, which is still a significantly large land package. There's still a number of targets there. Uh, any results that come from their work, of course, will be disclosed. And we'll sort of, um, you know, have our fingers crossed here that our friends at GoldQuest and, 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 uh, and the Dominican government provide some sort of a, um, you know, a catalyst here in the form of a, of a permit for Gold Quest that I think would evidence it's game on again for our Wanda Herrera. So that's a bit, bit of a bit of a wild card, but um, it's a very interesting project. It's got a number of targets. It's drill ready. It's drill permitted. And I think, um, quite frankly, you know, I think if, if Gold Quest were to get that permit, you might see some mid-tier and maybe even majors, but certainly mid-tier companies starting to look at that district as, uh, a, you know, as sort of a, an emerging district that may have some potential for you know, some sort of takeover or acquisition as well. And we'd be well positioned to be part of that if that were to happen. 